Hello once again. Having discussed so many areas in mathematics, there is this area that we cannot ignore and this one is on reading and interpreting information from a graph. Now, for our reference, we have this question that was being tested in one of the past years and it was about this graph and it is the one that we are going to use to remind ourselves a few things. So, before we answer this question, let us remind ourselves about some few points concerning this graph. Why am I saying we remind ourselves? Because I'm assuming this question was being uh, discussed in one of the previous classes. Now, the first thing that I want us to remind ourselves is what is a graph? We are also going to, uh, to discuss the types of graphs. We shall also look at parts of a linear graph, the scale. Now, these uh, four areas here are very, very important whenever you are reading and interpreting information from a graph. Let us start by asking ourselves, what is a graph? Now, a graph is a picture that can be used to read and interpret information using two quantities two quantities. Now look at our graph here. Which are these two quantities here? One of the quantity is represented towards the left along the line moving from top to bottom. That is one quantity and that is distance in kilometers. That is the other quantity down here uh, represented on this line moving across and it is time. So you find that in this graph, we are going to, uh, to look at these two quantities or to compare these two quantities, that is distance in kilometers and time. Actually, this kind of a graph, as you may see, uh, if it is distance and time, there is something to do with speed because there is somebody who is traveling from one point to the other. Now, what are these different types of graphs? There are different types of graphs like the linear graph. This one is a good example of a linear graph because after the graph is being plotted, there, there, is, there is this line which has been drawn inside the graph and it is the one which is showing how each one of these quantities is changing against the other. So we've got the linear graph. Then we also have the bar graph. There is also the pie chart. These three types of graphs here are the ones that we normally concentrate on. But for now, I don't want to talk about the pie chart. I will also not talk about the bar graph because these ones, I will talk about them uh, maybe in a later date. Now, let us look at the parts of a graph and of course we shall be looking at this type of a graph which we have here. Now we have talked about this line moving from top to bottom and across. These two lines join somewhere here. They join somewhere there and these two lines are called axes. They are called axes. So a graph has two axes, one moving from top to bottom and another one moving across. The one running from top to bottom or, fr or from bottom top, it is called the vertical axis. It is called the vertical axis. So this, the first axis here, the vertical axis, actually represent uh, distance covered and this one is in kilometers. Let us look at the other axis moving across. It is called horizontal axis. Horizontal axis and actually it lands across. Horizontal axis in our case here represent time taken. Represent time taken. Now this kind of a graph here whereby we are comparing distance covered and time taken, it is called a travel graph. It is called a travel graph. Now, let us move on. Let us look at the scale. What is a scale and how do we get a scale? To get a scale, we normally look at each of these axes. We compare or rather we look at the time, the, the axis for the time. We shall also look at the uh, axis for the distance covered. Now to get the scale, normally what we do, uh, 
we look at between one point and the other point. Like now in this case, we look at from 9 to 11. If we go up, we compare between 0 and 14. Let us begin by this vertical axis. So between 0 and 40, we've got these two big squares here. So we have got one square and another square. And actually there are two big squares. Two big squares and for these two squares, these two squares, they, they represent 40 kilometers. So for every two squares, you have 40 kilometers. For every two, uh, two squares, you have 40 kilometers. And because in this case now we have got one, two, three, four, when you move four of these squares, you cover 80 kilometers. Let us not move to the 80 kilometers. Let us concentrate between 0 and 40 kilometers. So we can say that uh, because the vertical axis represents the distance covered in kilometers, for every two squares, they will represent 40 kilometers. And these two squares here, these two squares, if again you look at this first square here, Inside, there are other small squares. And if you may count properly, you may find that there are about five of them. These are five. Up here, there are five. So between these two uh, squares here, there are ten more small squares. So for these ten small squares, they represent 40 kilometers. We want to see the value of one very small square square, what, how, what distance does it uh, represent? So, we can therefore say that for the 10 small squares, they represent 40 kilometers. Let me repeat once again. We are talking about these big squares here, and there are two of them. But if you look at this one square here, in it, there are, there are five more small squares. Five, five making a total of 10 small squares and they represent 40 kilometers. So actually we want to get the distance for every one small square. We should take 10, we divide by 40. So for one small square, it will represent 40 divided by 10, which will now be 4 kilometers. So if you cover one small square here, you'll be covering 4 kilometers. So when we talk about the scale, we want to see if we cover one small square, how many kilometers do we go? If we cover one big square here, how many kilometers do we go? Like now in this case, that one big square there will represent 20 because it is 40 divided by 2, that is 20, that is 20 to make 40. So you can now be able to, uh, to, to, to get the distance in between any two points. The moment you know that for every one square it represents four kilometers, then you are safe. Let us look at the horizontal axis, which is representing time covered in hours. Once again, if you look at uh, between 9 and 11, between 9 a.m. and 11 a.m., those are two hours. And between these two hours, we've got two squares. We've got two squares. And as we have said earlier, every one square here have got five small squares. So the two of them will have ten small squares. So for now, for every two squares, they will represent two hours. They will represent two hours. And if you proceed on and get the uh, the number of small squares that are in between those two squares, which are already 10, you will find that for every uh, 10 small squares, they will represent 120 uh, kilometers. Now, where are we getting 120, not kilometers, but minutes? Where are we getting 120 minutes? Two hours, for every one hour, it is 60 minutes. The other hour, 60 minutes. So two hours, they will represent uh, 20 minutes. And why are we doing this? Because we want to get, for every one small square, how many minutes does it represent? Or how many minutes will be covered? Of course, we shall take 10, we divide by 120, to get that one small square 
it will represent 12 minutes. Now let us continue. Let us continue. Coming back to our graph, coming back now to our graph, you will find that um, we have been able now to get some of the major parts of that graph that will help us now to answer the question. Now you are told that the graph below, it shows a, it shows a journey by a cyclist from point P to Q, or from city P to city Q. Now the question is, between what time was the average speed lowest? Now, what does this mean? If you look at this linear graph, we have already said that where the line is slanting, there was some movement. Where the line is slanting, there was a movement, and you can see there is also another movement down there. So this person made at least three movements. And you will find that between P and this point here, there is this section here that is flat. It is horizontal. In one given time you find a horizontal section of a linear graph, it indicates there was no movement. So there was no movement here, there was also no movement there. Why? This could have been because of one or the other reason. Maybe this person had a puncture and so he had to, uh, to stop and repair it. Maybe this person felt uh, tired and therefore he decided to rest. So, after covering from point P to this point here, this person decided to rest uh, a period of, at least if you look, at, you look down here, from 11 to this point here, that is one hour. So this person rested for one hour. Now, to be able now to get the point or the section that this person covered with the slowest speed, we are going to divide our uh, linear graph into two into three sections so there is that section we are also going to get another one here because there was also movement down here and because there was also another movement there we are also going to uh, look at that section so we shall have section A, we shall have section B, we shall also have section C. Because these three sections, they are the ones that this person actually made some movements. Now let us begin. We shall look at this section A here. We know that for speed, it is distance covered over the time taken. I would want somebody here to be very keen. Distance covered over the time taken. The same case with that section, time taken there. Distance against the time taken. That is the way we normally get speed. So, we first of all remind ourselves on how to get the speed, that is distance covered over the time taken. And therefore, we shall start by looking at section A. We calculate the speed for that section A. Look at this distance here. This person started the journey at that point P, which was about 220 kilometers and traveled up to another section there, which is a hundred, rather 140 kilometers. The difference between 220 and 240, if you may count properly, you will get a difference of about 80 kilometers. How? Count 1, 2, 3, 4. Multiply by 20, you get 80. Alternatively, you can get from 0 up to 220 and then you subtract from 0 to 240. So 220 subtract two, uh, 140. 220 subtract 140. You will get a difference of 80. Now what about the time taken? From 9 to 11 those are two hours. So this person covered a distance of 80 kilometers within two hours and therefore the speed in that case will be 
80 we divide by 2 which was 40 kilometers per hour that was the speed this person was traveling with on that section a we shall repeat the same for section b let us see how we are going to get the distance the distance here is from 240 and 60 if you look at this one here 40 plus uh, 20 that is 60 a difference of about how many kilometers let us count one two three four multiplied by 20 you'll get 80 kilometers alternatively as i had said earlier take from here from zero to 220 not 220 but 200 140 between zero and 140 and then you subtract this distance here which is 60. so if you take if you get the difference here you'll get 80. and again this person traveled that distance of 80 kilometers within a period of one hour because it was from 12 to one that is just one hour and then the speed in that case will be 80 which we shall divide by one and that will be 80 kilometers per hour Again, for section C, which is the last section, the difference here is, or rather for the distance covered, it is uh, 60 um, kilometers, which we, we shall subtract uh, from, uh, uh, we, shall, we shall subtract zero, and therefore this person covered 60 um, <coughs> kilometers against how many hours? Count one, two, three, four, five. Therefore, this person covered a distance of 60 kilometers against 5 hours. And therefore, the speed for that section C will be 60 divided by 5, which will be uh, 12 kilometers. Well, now if you look at these three different speeds here, you will find that one of the speed here is very high. Another one, which is 40 kilometers, is slightly lower. And 12 kilometers was the slowest was the slowest actually the uh, another point c this person was moving at a very very slow speed maybe this person was so tired and therefore he was traveling at a slower speed or maybe the place was hilly we don't know but with the 12 kilometers per hour if you compare with these other two speeds this one was very very slow and therefore this slow speed here was between which two times or which two hours there was um two because from one you go to two and then seven because that was the end of the journey because this person was traveling from point p to q this was the end of the journey and he arrived at point q at seven so between two and seven between two and seven that was the section this person was moving at a very slow speed and although we are we find a to be the appropriate answer before i conclude this question on distance rather on a distance against time which is a travel graph i have already said in one given time you find a horizontal line there it indicates no movement and although we are looking at this uh, kind of a graph whereby it, the the line has been plotted from top going down you will find other graphs that can be plotted from bottom right from zero up that way so the approach will just remain the same the approach will just remain the same and therefore uh, all what you need to do is to compare the vertical axis and the horizontal axis and don't forget to, look, uh, to work out or to check the scale for each of those two scales. Now, so far, I am assuming that somebody must have remembered one or two things that may have been forgotten. Well, with the time, we shall look at the other types of uh, graphs, that is the bar graph and the pie chart, if time allows. Goodbye.